My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, I love how we call on the saints every time we begin our prayer. We ask Our Lady, we ask St. Joseph, we ask our Guardian Angel. Because we're aware we never go to our prayer alone. We come to you with so many things on our hearts, but we come to you conscious that it's the whole of heaven praying. My prayer isn't something that I do separately, just alone, as if I were the only person on the earth. It's something I take part in. It's, it's the prayer of the whole church. The church here on earth, yes, all those praying, but, but maybe more, it's the church in heaven. Perhaps you're familiar with that distinction, traditional distinction made within the church, the, the church triumphant, the church suffering, and the church militant. The church triumphant are those who've already got to heaven, the saints, our friends, our lady, St. Joseph, all our favorite saints, the disciples of Jesus, all, the, all these people we're familiar with, and many, 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 many more that we're not familiar with. The church suffering, we refer to as those who've died but are going through a time of purification before they reach the promised land and they rely on our prayers, going through a time of purgatory, time of purification. And then, and then we're the ones here on earth, the church militant, militant meaning fighting, you know, working hard, dealing with the temptations that come in this life, with this, the struggles we get, with the uh, distractions maybe to lose faithfulness. We're the church militant. So when we refer to the church praying, we actually mean all of that, the whole church. And so I step inside something much greater than me when I come to Jesus, when I come to you, Lord, in my prayer. Maybe in pressing play on this podcast today, I'm not aware of the family I'm joining when I come to prayer. Well, thank you, Jesus, for introducing me to this family. Thank you that whatever I'm experiencing today, I also bring everyone else, everyone else, praying with me on this earth, all the prayers of the saints. We pray for those in the church suffering who need our prayers. Jesus, expand my heart, expand my horizons in my prayer that I, yes, talk to you about the things on my own heart, but also I want to bring you everything, everything. You make me an intercessor in this life to intercede on behalf of the whole church, the whole world, the whole universe. Jesus, nothing's too great to offer you. Might seem a bit dizzying for me, perhaps. Maybe in my own mind, this something feels too big <laughs> to join this, this worldwide family beyond space and time. But for you, it's not too big. So Jesus, thank you that we, we begin our prayer every time with the names of these saints, Mary, Joseph, and my guardian angel who's been in heaven praying for me from before I was born, throughout my life. And one day I'll get to meet. And we pray for each other. How many other people are pressing play on this podcast today? What's going on in their hearts? What are their intentions? What are they carrying? What are their struggles today? What are they anxious about? Jesus, we pray for them. We're a family, a family of faith, a family of love, a family of hope. Pope Francis speaks to us at the moment about the word hope in preparation for next year's Jubilee, in which we'll refer to the year as being pilgrims of hope, he's asked us to do. Well, Jesus, we now take hold of that hope, a hope that shows me your promises are true. And whatever I might be facing today, you are with me. Thank you for this great truth. And maybe if I don't need to know that myself today, maybe I don't need that a sense of that consolation, well, I pray it for someone else. Thank you, Jesus, that you're there with that person. The person who maybe pressed play today, craving a sense of your closeness. We pray for that person. We pray for ourselves. We pray for those in need. 
There's something in this about today's gospel. In today's gospel, you speak to faithful Jews. There are people who are, who are faithfully practicing the, the, the commandments, the rules, but had, you say in the gospel, they'd expanded it to include traditions that they'd passed on that actually stopped being about what God had taught. So the example, Jesus, that you give is that the, the commandment to honor my father and my mother, some people were, were getting round that law by saying, my money is korban. My money is given over to God. And that way I now don't have to give it to my father or mother. But it doesn't actually mean I give it away. I keep it. <laughs> I keep it and so I can spend what I want because I dedicated it, in inverted commas, I dedicated it to God. And so in dedicating it, I've got around rule number four <laughs> to see it as a list of rules in their mind. I've got around the rule. And Jesus said, you're, you're mocking the commandment of God to serve your own traditions. There's something in here that, that means they are tricking themselves. They were tricking themselves into thinking they were serving God they were being faithful to the law and yet actually had gone way past it. So their parents who perhaps were in need financially were getting nothing because there'd been this new tradition of, of uh, hallowing that money and therefore not having to give it away. But there can be ways in which we trick ourselves too. We can trick ourselves in the area of our prayer we begin to think, well, you know, I'm doing a lot for God during the day, so he's probably happy with that. Or, well, I'm trying to do my work for God, so that kind of counts as my prayer. So I'll do, I'll do a day's work or I'll do a day's study, and then, and then I've got, got the evening to myself because I did my prayer while I was in the office or in the library. We can trick ourselves to get around our, our need. It's our need. It's our essence to come before God in our prayer but we can get round it mentally by by naming other things well I you know I did stations of the cross with some friends so maybe that maybe that kind of counts I don't need to <laughs> worry about praying more personally today or whatever whatever it is some example that we can use we can do it in other places we can do it sometimes we see it especially in the virtue of holy purity and say so, well you know I need to watch this show because my friends are watching it, so I need to know what it's about. Or, well, it's it's not that bad. This scene isn't that bad. It's This is in every TV program. I'd, I'd have to turn off everything if I were to not watch this. Or something comes up on our social media, perhaps, and we say, huh, well, I don't recognize this, uh, I don't know, this person who's just added me. Maybe I should click on the profile and... And they'll have to flick through some of the material just to check I don't know this person. And meanwhile, we're seeing things that we, we really aren't good for us. These are all tricks that we're playing on ourselves. We think we're tricking the system. We think we're able to, to get round this call to virtue, which is going to be difficult. The call to virtue is going to be difficult. <laughs> or else it wouldn't be virtue. It's going to require discipline. It's going to require me to say no to myself. We don't like that bit. Jesus, that part doesn't come naturally to us. And so we, we'd rather find a way around it. Rather than have to give in to this fasting. Well, you know, fasting. Maybe fasting's old fashioned. Or, uh, well, I'm a growing guy. Or I'm, I'm a growing young woman. Maybe I, I can't give up my food because I need calories or it's not it's not wise to go without a meal or yeah all these things are true but but actually i need i need these spiritual disciplines in my life i need to be strict with myself in the area of holy purity i need to be faithful in my prayer i need to practice some kind of penances which are never going to be my preference but i need them and so i don't want to fall into tricking myself like the mistake that's made in the gospel, in thinking I'm looping around the system and finding a way out, actually, I'm only tricking myself. Actually, I'm only doing myself out of 
the gift that lies in the practice of virtue for me. So Jesus, I ask you today to give me the courage. All those praying with me on this podcast, I ask you to to bless us with courage for the road that's ahead, for the call to virtue that you give us. To know that we're not in it alone. That's such a joy for us, such a consolation in itself when we come to pray together. We're not alone. We're a wonderful community of, of faith and of prayer. And every one of us serves everyone else. The body of Christ, the members of the body of Christ serve the whole body. So Mother Mary, we come to you as our mother, the mother of this great family. We ask you for your love, for your accompaniment. Teach us how to keep our eyes fixed on your son, Jesus, especially in those areas where we might look past him, find a way around him, find a way around his call. Mother, let us look him face to face and discover the joy he pours into our life. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.